Uh, the game is like uh, it's not uh, it's not continuous and of East India Company, but it's similar type of game. Uh, this time around, however, we are in Americas and we have added things like colon management and production chains. So the basis of the game is the same, but we have so much more. And the goal of the commander is to create as powerful presence as you can in the new world uh, before the American Revolution starts in 1774. And during the campaign play, uh, you get orders and missions from four different advisors who are all interested in different fields. For example, there is military advisor, trade advisor, a bishop for religious things and royal advisor for anything else. You have a standing with each of the advisors and if your standing gets too low, your overall standing, you will get fired and it's game over. Uh, but the thing is, you don't have to please everyone at the same time. I mean, you can tell the military guy to stick it and just uh, play along with the three other guys. You conquer the new world by creating colonies and uh, you don't have uh, preset uh, colonies to start with, but you have colony spots and you can just uh, find them and then start colonies or find colonies wherever you want uh, as, as suitable spots. Uh, but uh, you have to bring in colonists and supplies and soldiers from your home country in order to uh, grow them. And each colony have, has a sphere of influence that grows as the colony gets bigger and more powerful. And that sphere of influence will reach different resources that are on the map and all those resources will then flow to the colony. Basically you have playing area from at the north from Hudson Bay to the south of the Caribbean so it's quite broad area and you can have different kind of colonies uh, specializing in different things for example in north there is uh, fur trade and stuff like that and in the south there is uh, uh, cotton, sugar, gold uh, trading is the main uh, main thing how you make money of course uh, and as I said trading is a uh, more two-way uh, thing now uh, colonies have constant need of different things uh, you have to uh, export them from your home country into the colonies and of course the home country expects you to bring stuff from the colonies so you have two-way two-way things there and there is uh, going to be nearly 20 different ship types and they're going to be separated into trading and military vessels, but also they're going to be separated into coastal vessels that can't cross the Atlantic Ocean, so they're just for intercolony trading. And then there are ocean going vessels that go to your home country and back to the colonies and do the trading over the Atlantic. You can also uh, have different type of ship commanders that have different kind of skills. Uh, you have specialist characters like uh, cooks or uh, cannon officers that still diverse the amount of ships you have. And also one of the new features are ship upgrades. So when you're going to build your ship you can select if you want some upgrades for it. Say uh, I want bigger cargo space and I'm going to sacrifice the amount of cannons for that or I want uh, more speed but less cargo space. You can have as many as 15 ships uh, on your side uh, in the battle. So in total 30 ships can shoot it out in one battle and that's the triple amount uh, what it was in East India Company. Each nation is also different this time around. So for example the French have cannons that shoot farther away but do less damage than the British that uh, shoot closer but do more damage and there are plenty of those differences so each faction is different and uh, also there is the combination of trading game and war game that you just don't have uh, in any other game I think so that's one unique point in Commander. 